might be very sophisticated, but uh, the talk will be uh, very elementary. In fact, uh, there, on Tuesday, we had uh, some talks which were much more advanced. Uh, so uh, I will just uh, try to explain a few simple things, uh, uh, because I don't know how to explain difficult things. Uh, <laughs> and, and also because uh, there are many young people, uh, maybe it is worthwhile to recall some very classical stuff uh, about uh, concerning this uh, uh, <clears throat> positivity properties of the base of a family. Uh, so uh, let me start with uh, the easiest, I think, manifestation of uh, this. So let's say you have a family of curves over some base. Uh, which is smooth. <clears throat> so, just a smooth family of curves of genus G, uh, which is at least two. Uh, then we know that the cotangent bundle of B <coughs> must have positivity properties. Uh, well, let's see. Now, let's assume for the moment that B is projective. Uh, then the cotangent bundle of B has positivity properties. Uh, namely, uh, well, up to a finite covering, we may suppose that this family comes from a universal family on the moduli space. Uh, so we have uh, some moduli map, say mu from B to Mg, uh, to Mg, and maybe curves with level structure. Uh, and uh, then x uh, comes from uh, the universal family of curves with level structures. Uh, and uh, now uh, the omega one of B uh, has a subshift uh, which is, uh, let's say, uh, which comes from the Kodaira Spencer map. Uh, I don't know to whom the construction is due. I learned it from a paper by uh, uh, Huang and Fivak. Uh, in 08, but it is probably uh, uh, earlier than that. Mm, so the Kodaira Spencer shift, well, it's, if you consider the Kodaira Spencer map, which goes from TB uh, to the first direct image, uh, uh, of the relative tangent bundle, if you dualize it, so you will have a f lower star of omega x over b squared, and you have the image in this cotangent bundle. Okay, so it's a rank one subshift, uh, uh, and uh, sorry. Uh, mm. Uh, no, it's not rank one, of course, it's of a higher rank, but it has the property <coughs> the image is H. It has the property that the determinant of H has the Kodaira dimension equal to the variation of the family. Uh, because uh, uh, this thing is functorial, uh, this omega x over b comes from omega c over m, 
uh, which is uh, what, which is ample, right? Uh, I uh, don't quite remember. I think it's ample, yes, by a theorem of feedback. Uh, so, uh, because this omega x over v is a pullback of omega uh, c over m, yeah, which is ample. <coughs> or some. <coughs> okay. Now, so, let's see. Uh, if we have a family of maximal variation, now then its base must be a curve of general type. In particular, uh, oh, sorry, uh, if, uh, if the base is a curve, let's see. <laughs> In particular, Uh, <clears throat> if B is a curve uh, and uh, uh, the family uh, is not isotrivial, uh, then B is a curve of general type. Uh, well, if B is not complete, here I had B projective. Uh, if B is not complete, it's the same story, only you have to consider the logarithmic di differentials. If B is only quasi-projective, uh, so you have a subshift H in uh, omega one of log Boundary, well, uh, you take some completion B uh, bar, you have some boundary, you consider uh, such a sheaf of logarithmic differentials, uh, which has a quadrilateral dimension. Uh, equal to the variation of the family. <coughs> uh, well, of the determinant, of course. Uh, so in particular, if it's a curve, then it's a curve of log general type. So if B is a curve, then uh, it's of log general type. <coughs> so, uh, if you don't want uh, to consider families of curves, but you want to consider families of higher dimensional varieties, then of course the story gets much more complicated and it's indeed a result of Fiveg and Zuma from the beginning of the 2000s. <clears throat> uh, so in higher dimension, Log general type provided that the family is not isotrivial. Huh? <clears throat> uh, so, in higher dimension, uh, uh, there is work by Fidag and Zoe. Uh, so uh, here we were talking about higher genus curves. Uh, so let's talk for the moment about uh, canonically polarized varieties, but uh, the result is true in uh, greater generality. For instance, uh, canonical bundle semi-ample would do. Uh, so uh, X to B, a family uh, of canonically polarized varieties, smooth family. Uh, 
Well, then you have this feedback XOR sheaf. Uh, Uh, so uh, there is some L. Uh, it lives in the symmetric, some symmetric power uh, of uh, these logarithmic differentials, <coughs> and it has uh, the required positivity property. Only now. Uh, uh, now. Uh, uh, it's the symmetric power, which is, of course, more complicated than just omega one. Uh, so uh, the Kodaira dimension of L. Um, well, we might as well suppose it is rank one. Oh, can one take it rank one? Um, Let's see, could I write dimension of the determinant of L, just to be on the safe side. Uh, but I think, I think one can take L of rank one. Um, so uh, is uh, uh, greater or equal than the variation of F. <clears throat> maybe, maybe it's just rank one. <sighs> Okay, so if the dimension of the base is one, this just says that our base is of log general type. If the family is not either trivial, uh, but if the dimension is not one, uh, one well, you don't immediately see what uh, does this positivity property want to see. No, so, <clears throat> uh, well, nevertheless, already Fivek and Zua used uh, this construction to prove uh, that uh, that uh, families over certain bases had to be isotrivial. Hmm? Over some bases must be Isotrivial. Uh, for instance, uh, yeah, they had um, uh, B equal to Pn, uh, well, Pn without some number of divisor without S, where S uh, was a simple normal crossing with. Uh, less than n irreducible components, something like this. Uh, and they conjectured uh, now it's proved, now it's a theorem, uh, I think first proved by Campana and Pound, right? <laughs> Uh, they, they conjectured that uh, if the variation of x of f is maximal, then uh, uh, this b is of log general type. Uh, then uh, b is of log general type. Okay, uh, and in fact, uh, the route to understanding this, well, in fact, the way it was proved used uh, very much, well, uh, Frederick's theory of special manifolds. So key somehow to understanding this, uh, so, companies, 
special manifolds theory. Okay, uh, so let me, um, well, uh, Frederick told you what special manifolds were, but I think it's always, always useful to uh, uh, tell it once more. So uh, <clears throat> uh, assume, uh, so let first X be a projective variety. A projective manifold, let's see. Uh, then uh, 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 let's consider subshifts of rank one of omega p of x. Uh, so Bogomorov in 79 uh, proved that if L in omega p of x is a rank one subshift, uh, then uh, the Kodaira dimension of this L is less or equal than P. And moreover, he proved that if it is equal to P, then it comes from a rational map. Uh, and uh, if this is P, uh, then uh, there is a rational map from X to Y, where Y is P dimensional, uh, and uh, L mm, is what? Uh, L is uh, not quite the inverse image of the canonical class of Y. Uh, L is uh, the saturation of this inverse image of the canonical class of Y uh, in uh, in omega p of x, uh, because, well, a priori, of course, if you have lots of multiple fibers, for instance, uh, then this inverse image is not uh, torsion-free. Uh, sorry, <laughs> the inverse image is torsion-free, but the quotient by this inverse image, the quotient of omega p by the torsion, uh, by the inverse image is not necessarily torsion-free, so somehow you can find there a still more positive subshift. Uh, so, uh, Uh, well, uh, let's look what does it mean. I mean, if Y is of general type, if Y is of general type, uh, then of course, F star of KY already has a Kodaira dimension P. But it can happen that Y is, uh, let's say, projective line, but the map has lots of multiple fibers. So the Kodaira dimension will grow uh, when you pass to the saturation. Uh, so if, uh, um, uh, if not, uh, it could be, uh, of course, the Kodaira dimension of this uh, is still less than P, but uh, if there are multiple fibers, uh, if there are many, enough multiple fibers, then, then what? Uh, then, uh, uh, then, uh, Oh, then F star of K, Y saturated uh, might be of maximal Kodaira dimension. Uh, is uh, actually a F star of K, Y plus something. Uh, well, roughly, uh, let's say all these multiple fibers are irreducible of multiplicities M, I, uh, I mean, we don't go into technical details. Uh, so uh, you have to add the sum of f m i minus one, uh, say f i, where f i are those components which parameter multiple fibers. Hmm. 
about which Frederick told us one hour ago. Uh, components uh, uh, of multiple fibers. Of multiplicity, am I? Uh, so, uh, uh, for instance, for instance, if our f from x to y is given by a foliation, for instance, if we have a foliation around f, uh, if uh, uh, we have a compact foliation, uh, algebra algebraically integrable. Uh, some people want to call it compact, some people want algebraically integrable. Well, meaning that the leaves are compact, that they are actually sub-varieties of X. Uh, foliation. F, uh, what is F? This is just a subsheaf in Tx. <clears throat> uh, and our F is just the family given by this foliation. Hmm? Uh, well, let's say regular uh, foliation without singularities. Uh, this F might have multiple fibers, can have multiple fibers uh, corresponding to the leaves which have non-trivial holonomy, uh, and uh, then uh, And then the canonical class of the foliation, it's not quite the relative, relative canonical class of the vibration. Uh, it's this minus minus the ramification, okay? <clears throat> uh, so uh, we have, zero to n star the conormal bundle to the omega of x to f star, right? This conormal bundle is not quite, is not quite uh, the uh, inverse image of omega y, it's the saturation of this guy <laughs> in omega x. Hmm? Well, a foliation is, yeah, to, uh, yeah, saturated subshift. Uh, you want the quotient to be torsion free. So uh, this is how multiple fibers contribute to positivity of things we consider. Okay, uh, so uh, in this case, we say uh, that uh, our base acquires the orbifold structure. So what is this? This is just the inverse image. So the difference between uh, between uh, uh, what uh, the KF and the relative cotangent, uh, relative uh, sorry, um, yes, cotangent, yes, relative canonical. Uh, this is the ramification of F. Uh, what is this? So this is F. Uh, well, uh, in a sense, uh, you should, uh, well, I will put it also between these uh, uh, things. Uh, well, uh, uh, this is the inverse image of Mi minus one over Mi uh, Gi, okay? Uh, where those GIs are divisors of uh, 
critical values over which you have multiple fibers. Hmm? Uh, so, uh, so I, <clears throat> uh, let's say f star of gi is m i times f i, where f i's are on the left, right? Uh, so you have multiple fibers of multiplicity m i. You have uh, something which parameters uh, these multiple fibers on y, uh, and you have. Uh, uh, this ramification, which is the universe image of these, right? Uh, so uh, <coughs> uh, these are coefficients of our orbifold, which Frederick was, well, usually denotes as ci, uh, and the multiplicities are mi. Uh, so uh, our base comes with the orbifold structure. So the base, Y or B, I think it's mostly B in this talk. So the base Y, well, mostly denoted by B, comes from, comes with the orbital structure. Huh? <clears throat> uh, the orbifold structure, delta, uh, which is the sum of ci, uh, gi. And those ci's are mi minus one over mi, where mi's are multiplicities of the multiple fibers or the orders of the holonomy group. Uh. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so, uh, uh, we were talking about quasi-projective manifolds. Also, sometimes B is a quasi-projective manifold. Huh? Uh, and then uh, this S, the boundary, uh, you also view it as uh, such, a, such an orbifold divisor. Uh, but then, well, ci's are equal to one, right? So you have to say that mi's are infinity, okay? So in the log case, uh, so this uh, b uh, was b uh, bar minus s, uh, and s comes with coefficient one, <coughs> Uh, so, well, ci's are one uh, and mi's are infinite, okay? Uh -huh. uh, and uh, so, uh, uh, Campana, in fact, formulated a conjecture of which Fibexo's conjecture is a consequence. Maybe I should. Uh -huh. uh, so, Campana's isotriviality conjecture. <coughs> uh, which was a theorem by Tajim. is as follows. Uh, is as follows. Uh, if you have uh, a family over a special base, uh, then it must be isotrivial. A family, uh, well, you need to, of course, say a family of what, but uh, let's, uh, let's say of quasi-polarized projective manifolds, a smooth family, family of quasi-polarized uh, manifolds over a special 
This is isotrivial. So what do we mean here by the special base? The special base is something quasi-projective here. Here, the special base is a quasi-projective beam hmm? such that in the logarithmic cotangent bundle, there is no Bogomolov subshift. Uh, uh, has no Bogomolov subshifts. Mm, well, let's see. Uh, subshifts. Uh, well, the, um, the subshifts are, of course, in the exterior powers. Uh, that is, for any lambda uh, L of rank one, uh, subshift of uh, uh, this, uh, the Kodaira dimension is strictly less than P. Okay? So a special manifold, a special projective manifold about which Frederick was talking was um, a manifold which uh, whose uh, cotangent bundle did not carry uh, any Bogomolov subshifts. Well, I forgot to write it down, of course. I forgot to write it down. Maybe I use a different color because it's important. So X is special. If uh, any L in omega P of X has Kodaira dimension strictly less. Mm -hmm. Okay? So we don't have maps on two varieties of general type. We don't have maps on two something which is maybe not of general type, but is of orbifold general type. That uh, it is of general type with its Orbifold structure, okay? <clears throat> okay, so uh, uh, Campana's is a triviality conjecture is this. Uh, and in fact, this implies FIV exhaust conjecture because of this core map, yes? Yes, yes. Uh, so, well, uh, let's see, uh, B bar, if you want, I, I'm. I hope everybody sees what I mean. So it's a, a logarithmic, yes or not? I mean, mm -hmm. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Uh, so um, uh, Campana's conjecture actually implies Fivexo's conjecture because of this core map. Uh, or is it Fivex conjecture? Uh, this one, uh, I just forgot whether Zua was uh, one of the authors or not. Uh, well, uh, let's see Fivex Zua. It's always a pleasure to attribute things to people. Uh, so, uh, comp <laughs> <laughs> implies Fivex uh, Zua in the following way. Uh, because of the core map. Well, you know the core map uh, is uh, something uh, which has a special fibers. Uh, so if you have, um, uh, if you have uh, a family of maximal variation, Uh, and uh, you are uh, uh, and your B really fibers 
with fiber special manifolds if the core map is non-trivial, so if the variation is maximal, but core is non-trivial, and if the if Campana's conjecture is true, then uh, the restriction of our family to the fibers of this core map must be isotrivial. Uh, well, this is a contradiction, since uh, the restriction, uh, restriction uh, of our map to the fibers Ah, there is one more, probably. Is there one more? No. Just two. Ah? Just two. Just two. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> uh, yes. The... Yes, well, everybody is tired. Uh... What? Uh, I didn't hear. So, since the restriction uh, of the family to fibers is isotrivial. Okay, uh, so this was proved by, by Taji, that if you have a special base and a family of something quasi-polarized over it, then it's isotrivial. So what did we prove? Uh, so we just replaced uh, a smooth family, a smooth family, but what you might call quasi-smooth family, or a family given by a regular foliation uh, like I just erased, I think. Uh, so our theorem, uh, it is some refinement of the G's result. <coughs> we replace a smooth family uh, over a quasi-projective base uh, by, yeah, Quasi smooth family. Uh, that is to say, uh, well, this is uh, the same thing as uh, a family given by a regular foliation. A family of leaves uh, of a regular algebraic foliation F. Well, uh, why is it quasi-smooth? Because uh, in such a family, the only singularities you get are multiple fibers uh, with a smooth reduction. Uh, the reason is a rib stability theorem. Uh, so, uh, um, mm -hmm. mm. Well, such a family of leaves, such a family gives a morphism of course, well, like, like above, to some base, you can view this base as a, a sub-variety of the Chow variety, burlesque base, whatever, of some compactification. Uh, and, uh, well, maybe you want normalization, uh, let's say B prime, and B to B prime is normalization. Uh, and then you know that the holonomies, uh, well, in the Keller case, and a fortiori in the projective case, you know that the holonomies of all leaves are finite. Uh, and uh, this thing 
uh, locally around the fiber is a quotient. Well, from differentiable point of view, of course, it's not holomorphically a quotient of a product, but uh, so if you have a G as a holonomy of a fiber, let's say F, uh, then our family, uh, topologically, uh, we have um, just uh, F times transversal over the action of G, right? <clears throat> uh, uh, is a neighborhood of, uh, of Yes, uh, no, uh, of course you have to take the covering, right? Yes, yeah, so, so it acts on F. Uh, it acts on T because it's uh, the transverse and uh, this G is the holonomy group, neighborhood of F. Uh, of course, uh, holomorphically you will have some variation of complex structure, but differentiably it's uh, this, so F is uh, some smooth multiple fiber. Hmm? Multiple fiber of multiplicity uh, order of G, okay? Uh, so uh, we just, uh, and of course you have this orbifold structure on B, uh, uh, you have this orbifold structure on B, uh, which is given by those multiplicity, the, and then you want to compactify B, and of course you take this boundary with the coefficient one, so multiplicity infinity, and then maybe you have a couple of more components because, uh, of course, uh, Frederick's theory is about smooth orbifolds. So maybe you have to desingularize and uh, take fibered products and desingularize again. So you will have um, lots of components, but they all will be of infinite multiplicity. They all will be just logarithmic. Uh, the things which are uh, multiple, uh, they are visible already on B, you don't, don't have to compactify. So B comes with or default structure given by, well, multiplicities, Mi of fibers along divisors, Uh, then there is some boundary. Uh, then there is some desingularization because B is singular. I mean, B has quotient singularities, so you have to work a bit. Uh, but uh, this is kind of technical stuff. <clears throat> okay, uh, so, uh, so uh, what we can prove? We can prove that if the orbifold B is special, then the family is isotrivial. <coughs> so theorem uh, so if uh, the orbifold B is but I did not define yet a special orbifold base, okay? I am going to do this. B delta is special. Then uh, the family is isotrivial. Uh, well, maybe it's compactifications. Well, uh, okay, uh, so what means or before be special? 
Oh, I just read something. Uh, so uh, let me consider a kind of relative cotangent, okay? Uh, the relative cotangent uh, is uh, 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 the relative cotangent uh, is the saturation of the inverse image of the cotangent of the base. Uh, so it's the core normal bundle of the foliation, okay? Uh, so the real, well, what is uh, so let me consider this uh, relative cotangent uh, well in foliation theory you call it conormal bundle uh, so this is the saturation of uh, of the uh, cotangent of the base, <coughs> okay? Uh, so if my X was compact, if my X and B was compact, then I would say that the speciality is just the absence of Bogomolov subshifts in this guy, okay? Uh, <laughs> Uh, and in general, it's morally the absence of, well, you, you have to take compactifications and that's it. Uh, so, uh, if X was compact, if X was projective, say, uh, then I would say that uh, the orbifold base is special. By definition, it means that any rank one subsheaf in omega p in the exterior power of this stuff has Kodaira dimension less than p. Okay? Uh, well, if, if not, uh, then I have to um, somehow produce some omega x bar over f bar. But of course, uh, it's not a foliation anymore. It's not an, well, maybe it is, but it is with singularities and whatever. Uh, if not, consider uh, omega p x bar over f bar or something like this. Uh, well, it's a compactification. Uh, that is to say, well, of course, you have this X bar to B bar for some compactifications. Let's denote it by F bar. Uh, and then you saturate the inverse image of this uh, friend. Uh, well, you saturate it, and then you take the exterior power. Uh, and you do this saturation uh, in what? In the logarithmic guy, right? In omega uh, one of x bar log uh, whatever. Mm? <coughs> Okay, uh, so, uh, and of course, uh, you ask that this does not carry Bogomolov subsheaves. Uh, so, uh, or before this. Special, this means no Bogomolov subsheaves there. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, 
it turns out to be equivalent to the usual notion used by Frederick for the base. I mean, the base, as I told you, has natural orbifold structure, and Frederick has a concept of being special for orbifolds. I mean, not related to foliations or whatever, uh, but it's not so easy to define because, uh, well, of course, as usual, it's absence of Bogomolov subshifts somewhere, but now these are orbifold differentials. It's complicated. Uh, so, uh, well, maybe I erase something else, or would it not really make a difference? I don't know. Uh, so, I <coughs> Uh, so, uh, this is the same as to say special, uh, same thing as to say that B with its orbifold structure delta about which I have been talking some time ago, right, uh, is a special orbifold. Mm -hmm. And what is a special orbifold? Uh, this means no Bogomolov subsheaves, subsheaves in, uh, in what? in the orbifold differentials. And the orbifold, well, orbifold differentials. What is orbifold differentials? It is something which is generated, uh, let's say, if G, if delta is given locally by Zi is zero, with multiplicity mi, then I have to take as a generator dz zi over zi to the power, you know what, uh, one minus one over mi. Well, uh, what do I mean by this? I mean that uh, these orbifold differentials do not live on b. They live on a covering of b ramified along delta and maybe something else. I cannot guarantee that there is a covering which is ramified only along delta. But uh, I take something which ramifies along this with multiplicity this, then if I substitute here W is, uh, well, uh, W to the power mi instead of zi, this will perfectly make sense. Uh, so it is a sheaf which is locally free, well, it is very nice, but it lives on a covering. Uh, so, and I want this sheaf not to have Bogomolov subsheaves. Well, with Bogomolov subsheaves, it's not, also not so easy to define. I should uh, speak about some saturated Kodaira dimension instead of the usual Kodaira dimension. Every time I compute the space of sections, I have to saturate. Uh, in this stuff, in the power of this stuff. Otherwise, I will get the same. I mean, other, otherwise, I will get nothing new. Uh, but if you define things properly, then it's a nice notion which perfectly makes sense. And so it makes us win a little bit with respect to Berustagi's theorem, because, I mean, he would just throw those multiple fibers away and uh, do as if he had a logarithmic base. And we are able to take them into account somewhat. Uh, well, uh, so. Question. We have two, defi two definitions right now. This one depends on delta. I don't see, where does the one on the middle board depend on delta? Where is delta? Uh, I, uh, but delta is hidden in the foliation. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, the foliation has some non-trivial holonomy. Uh, uh, this gives you delta, okay? I mean, the mi's are orders of holonomy. Huh? 
Uh, okay. So maybe, uh, well, the proof is quite, I mean, it's technical, but the idea is simple. <laughs> you just, uh, well, on our base, you unfortunately don't really have Fivexo sheaf uh, because uh, there, there are multiple fibers and you have Fivexo sheaf only on the base of smooth family. But we are able to do a simple covering trick which allows us to forget about multiple fibers. Uh, so maybe instead of, in the five minutes which remain, uh, instead of explaining you all this, mm, I will rather tell you about our motivation which turned out to be completely wrong even before we wrote this paper. So the story is as follows. We were looking at the characteristic foliation on a smooth divisors in a holomorphic symplectic manifolds. Uh, those foliations were first studied by Huang and Fivek, uh, or maybe by Huang and Ogizo even earlier, I don't know, by Yunmuk and somebody, but, uh, well, uh, I don't know which is the order of... Uh, 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 so in any case, what is the characteristic foliation? If you have a holomorphic symplectic manifold, if you have a X, a holomorphic symplectic manifold, uh, that is to say a compact scalar manifold which carries a holomorphic symplectic form. Uh, so it's... Uh, nowhere degenerate to form, holomorphic. Uh, and you have G in X, a smooth hypersurface, smooth hypersurface. Uh, then you can <clears throat> uh, consider the restriction of uh, sigma to D, it will have one dimensional kernel. Uh, so you have the foliation, a foliation f of rank one on G, eh? uh, which is called the characteristic foliation. Characteristic foliation. Uh, so uh, we were interested in the question, uh, when could one say that this uh, uh, foliation was algebraically integrable? Uh, of course, if it, it is algebraically integrable if D is uniroot, it's easy to see. On the other hand, well, uh, Huang and Fivek proved that it cannot be algebraically integrable when D is of general type. And we proved uh, that it basically only can be algebraically integrable, well, either if D is uniroot or, or if the whole picture comes from a product. Uh, so, I mean, say on an irreducible holomorphic symplectic manifold, on a hyperkeller manifold, it cannot be algebraically integrable unless it is unirooted. Mm -hmm. And the way we proved it, well, well, we studied this family, we proved it was isotrivial and, uh, and so on. Uh, so, uh, <clears throat> uh, then we thought, well, why restrict oneself to divisors? Uh, let's say, uh, let's take some co-isotropic co uh, uh, co M uh, of, uh, of what, of co-dimension K. Uh, and then there will be a K-dimensional kernel, and then there will be a foliation of rank K, uh, and, uh, well, which is also called characteristic foliation, of course, uh, and then you can ask when algebraically integrable. Uh, so, uh, that's why we were looking for some criterion for isotriviality. Hmm? Uh, <laughs> in this orbifold setting, uh, because for the first, I don't know, year after uh, having began to think about the problem, we just did not notice that such things never had multiple fibers in co-dimension one. Uh, so, so our story is sort of irrelevant. So that's why I would like to conclude with a question. 
do you know interesting examples of algebraically integrable foliations which arise somehow naturally and which do have multiple fibers in codimensional one? <laughs> uh, so, uh, here are no, unfortunately, no multiple fibers in codimension one, so there is no orbifold machinery needed to study this kind of problems. And so the question, are there interesting natural algebraically integrable foliations no, with uh, well non-trivial holonomy in codimension one. Uh, yes, yes, regular, regular, of course. <laughs> so, I mean, I know there are no, not so many examples of regular foliations. So the characteristic foliation was some kind of uh, hope because, I mean, it really does arise very naturally. But maybe you know some other constructions. I don't know. <laughs> uh, so. <laughs> okay, so let's see.